Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Woken. I'm back with another Fake Grand Order video here to talk about the Hyunkyo pre-release campaign. That's right, we're getting pretty close to 5.5 and based off of this pre-release campaign, I think we're pretty much okay with the- <laughs> we're not probably not gonna get Muramasa at this point. Because I think in the Korean version of the game, this is around the time that they would announce it, so I'm at least of sound mind of that. So let's move on. Wouldn't it be funny if it still happened though? Anyway. That's what today's video is going to be. I hope you like it. If you do, feel free to leave a like, comment, subscribe. Let's go. Okay, so Thunderous Flash. There's going to be a limited time campaign, which will basically put a bunch of the Japanese servants up on uh, double friend points while they're servants. So you got Sei, you got Shikbu, uh, you got Tamamo, you got Shuden, you got Danzo, you got Kintoki, you got Raiko, and you got the Banana. There's also going to be new rank up quests for Kentucky, which is the Golden Spark. New one for Donzo, which is another one for her Noble Phantasm. And then the Banana has uh, a buff to her Disengage. I think this is also the... I don't remember if this is the specific... I mean, we'll look at it. And then, of course, there's also a banner that comes along with it. Because it's the pre-release as we get ready to get to the new campaign that's coming out. Uh, which should be sometime around the 16th, so that gives you enough time to catch up with Olympus, so you can start along with this one. But yeah, for, for, for the banner, it has Kintoki, it has Raiko, it has Donzo, and it has the banana featured on it, as you would expect. And then the right up craft essences are from the old Kintoki event from back in the day. Dumplings. It might actually be the Raiko event, looking at these. It's been a very, yeah, it has to be, because it has Ninja Boy on it. Dumplings over flowers, faithful companions, and hidden sword pheasant reversal. Nothing too major, but they do have some nice art on here, so that's always nice. So let's look over the units real quick. We'll start with Banana. Banana's always in the banner, so the only people who are going to be going after the Banana are the ones who... See right there, Banana Oni. The only ones who are going to be going after uh, the Banana are people who badly want the Banana. I think mine's already like NP4... So I actually only just need one more copy. Uh, let's see, her active skills. Demonic Nature of the Oni A increases party attack for 3 turns, increases on MP damage for 3 turns. 20% <coughs> and 30%, pretty basic stuff. But she was a basic unit from back in the day. This is the second the skill that's going to be getting a buff. Rampage of the OE Onis, A+, remove one ally's debuff, recovers their HP. Increases their critical damage for one turn, increases one Shoot and Doji ally attack for three turns, and if Shoot and Doji ally is alive on battlefield, charge own MP gauge by 20%. That's a very specific cost of what you need. So it is a move that, you know, you want to put them together. You want to put the, the team up of Shoot and Doji and uh, Banana, everyone's favorite. Third skill, Shapeshift A, increase on defense for 30% for one turn, further increase on defense for three turns. It's 60%, but she's a Berserker, so she still has... Paper's thin. She can die very quick. Her, her passive skills, Madness Enhancement B, increase of 8%. Third skill of critical attack resistance against Saber Foes, very specific. Noble Phantasm as it deals damage to one enemy. It's one hit, 100% chance of hitting, of dealing all your damage, I mean. Uh, at level 1, it's 600% damage, and then at level 5, it's 1,000. Reduce their defense for 3 turns, and boom, there you go. This is a very basic Berserker. Um, <laughs> there's really nothing more to say. Um, you really only want to run her if you're actually a big fan of the banana, and if you're a big fan of the banana, then you'll make it work. At least now it seems with this buff, it's a pretty nice actual buff to what she is. The one thing that's always going to be a bummer, especially with Berserker, um, Gorilla Berserkers is that they were in the game they were such a problem that a lot of the game nowadays is designed specifically to hurt them as quickly as possible so if you don't have guts it makes it a little bit harder for you to beat just a Berserker in general which will probably be something we'll talk about about with Raiko um, but yeah especially for single target ones who are dealing with bosses but for raids and stuff where there's usually only one health bar it works out perfectly fine so there you go, that's the banana for you. Let's move on to the next one, who is Donzo, who is story locked, which is a fancy way of saying limited without actually calling them limited. So Donzo. She has two quick one arts through two buster. For skill, synthetic limbs device A, increase quick and buster for three turns, 30% both times. 
Ninjutsu A grants one ally's evasion for one turn, increase their crit star generation for one turn, 45%. Karakuri Genpo B+, plus, grant one ally's invincibility for one turn, increase their crit star generation rate for one turn, 45%. That's not... Okay. And then she has present concealment A. Her pen scale for the third one is increased damage against alter egos, which is funny. Her rank, her noble phantasm, which is rank C+, plus, is three hit buster, deals damage to all enemies, increase party buster performance by 20% for three turns. And then a bonus against demonic foes, so it's 400% at MP level 1, and 5 at 600, 600%, yeah. Deals extra damage to demonic foes, which is 150% at charge level 1, and if you get it all the way to charge level 5, it's 200%, and there you go. Uh, Donzo needs a lot of buffs. This skill, it is nice to be able to give, like, your other party members, like, something like invincibility or evasion for a turn. But you have to remember that <laughs> you need to give them more than crit star generation. That's basically nothing. It's it's really not really much in the grand scheme of things. She's also a someone who kind of values crit stars, but at the same time she's also a buster. She feels like too much of a stuck between two different worlds. I think she could probably be much better once they start buffing some of these other skills. Because it seems like she wants to be a support unit, but she's not 100% there with what she currently has. So, that's how I feel. I love Donzo though. I have her. I occasionally use her from time to time. But it's really more because I like Donzo, and not actually because I think she's a very good unit. <laughs> I think every time I've ever used her, she's died, because she's not built very strong. But you know what? I do enjoy using her. There's, there you go. There's something to be said about that. Next, here's the big one. One of the big ones. We have Raiko, aka the reason I'm not going to be able to look at summoning, because I'm an idiot and I always summon for Raiko whenever I see her. She has one quick, two arts, two busters. Her first skill, which is the Genji Clan Martial Arts Disciple Discipline EX, which is a buff after the second interlude. Increase own crit star absorption for three turns. Increase own crit damage for three turn for three attacks three turns, 600%. Crit damage is 60%. Second skill, Mana Burst Lightning A. Increase own buster performance for one turn. Grants off evasion for one turn, 30%. Third skill, Mystery Killer A. Increase own damage against demonic enemies for three turns. Increase on damage against servant enemies of the Earth or Sky attribute for three turns. This excludes demi servants, pseudo servants, except Setonia. And it's 50%, 50%, and that lasts for three turns. Cooldown is six. Her passive skills are Magic Resistance D, Madness Enhancement EX, Writing A, Divinity C. Third skill is Anti Assassin Critical Attack Chance Resistance, which is nice. And her Noble Phantasm, which is ranked A+, plus after her first strengthening. Deal damage to all enemies, reduce their crit star, their critical attack chance by 20% for 3 turns. Damage is 400% at level 1, 600% at level 5. And then the increase to crit star generation, which lasts for a single turn, is 100% at turn level 100. At level 5, it is 300%. So... Uh, Raiko is actually very good. She's very good for farming, just generic farming. The problem that has always existed with Raiko is that Arjuna Alter exists now. So she was the best for a very long time. She's just not anymore. Uh, and yeah, that's the, I think the basis of what you can really say to her. She sometimes falters a little bit in damage because there's not like, outside of this, there's not really a lot of like, buster and performance going on in here. Like, even here, it's a reduce to critical attack, and then it's increasing on crit star generation, which is all fine and good. But when you're usually looking for an AoE buster, what you really care about is killing everyone. So, she's not there yet. She also doesn't have guts, which is never a good thing with a berserker, just in case. Though, to be fair, with AoE, it's less of an issue, because they're really just here to kind of do a quick sweep of the floor, and then just kind of move on with their life. So, there you go. Her second skill could also eventually get buffed. I think the funniest thing is that she does keep getting buffed. They, they keep buffing. There's really no reason to buff her. There's... Because she's good as she is right now. She's just not as good as the best... One of the best berserkers in the game, which is Arjuna Alter. And then later on, obviously, Morgan, when she actually enters the game. I think Morgan ends up being the best berserker in general. Um... Which is something that I think some Arjuna Alter fans will still argue with them because it's like, it's, oh, what about the damage? And it's like, well, she's support, she's doing damage and then also supporting and doing all this other stuff. 
and she's used in different team comps, it's a little bit different. It's a little bit of a different story, but either way, Raiko really has nothing at fault here. It's just that other dudes are better, <laughs> but who cares? Very great unit. I wish I actually was able to get her. I always end up summoning for her because I love Raiko. And damn it, I, ju I just can't this time, man. I gotta stop falling for it. Anyway, next we have Kentoki, and he's the last one. Kentoki, Japan's favorite son. Japan absolutely loves Kentoki. Two, one quick, one arts, three buster. He's, of course, a buster gorilla. One of the best ones in the business. Monster's strength, A+, plus, increase on attack for one turn. Second skill, charges on MP gauge by 50%. And then natural body A increases zone um, offensive debuff resistance for three turns, and then recover on HP. Doesn't matter. Mad enhancement E, divinity D. Third skill is a uh, increase of own critical attack resistance against assassins, because shooting, of course. And then his rank C, which is the noble phantom that we got, which is deals damage to that that uh, ignores defense buffs to one enemy, then reduce their buster resistance by 30% for two turns. 800% damage at level 1, 1200% at level 5, chance to stun them is a 50% chance to charge level 1 and 500% 500, 500 at 100% at um, charge level 5. Okay, Kentoki, really fucking good. <laughs> I think he's still using Japan to just completely annihilate bosses, because that's what he's really good at. I know you're looking at the second skill, it's like, it's just a 50% charge NP. That's enough, man. In a meta where Buster is all about, like, looping in, it's a turn 6 cooldown, he can easily get this back. He deals a shit ton of damage just really quickly and then ends their just their life and their existence in general. Uh, he ends up being extremely good for that. He doesn't even have what I was complaining about everyone else, which is, like, he doesn't have really a gut. It doesn't matter. Most bosses don't live long enough for it to matter. Which is maybe a sign of a, an extremely strong unit. I think he's probably the last bastion for the Buster Gorilla dream. He's really fucking good in terms of just being Buster, breaking them down, ruining their kneecaps, doing whatever, and then moving on with your life. That's Kentucky, and he's uh, awesome. He's the golden man for a reason. Still very good. This, um, he's only really had one buff up, and that one buff up was enough for him to just see constant play. But you never know if that's... Well, no, actually, this is a very good buff, like, compared to what it was. It's it's a pretty crazy buff, so there you go. And then, of course, his skills, which is the only thing that matters here is the Buster performance up by 2%, which is funny. <laughs> it's only 2%. doesn't have very much madness in him. So there you go. That's his banner. Um, obviously, I think Kentucky and Raiko are worth summoning for, but if you are looking to the horizon, as I said, New Year's is when we expect Muramasa, and if you're someone who's too cautious... Maybe Thanksgiving, even though I doubt it. I, again, I really do doubt it, but I'm just going to say it just in case. Maybe if you care about Muramasa, keep saving. But, oh man, there's a point. The reason I'm not summoning is because I really care about Ibuki, who is right around the corner. And then there's also Dalman, everyone's favorite scumbag. Uh, one of the best quick uh, AoE servants in the game. Still is, I think. Uh, it, for us, he's definitely going to be the absolute best for quick. He's like the... In the arts meta that we currently live in, he is Quick's one soul shining light in the world. So there you go. Those are all dudes that are up in the horizon. And then there's also uh, Vidra, I believe, who's here for Christmas. And then I also think they might sneak in Arjuna Altar for Christmas. Because he wasn't there in the Japanese version of the game, which it never made any sense. Didn't make any sense to me, but we'll see. And then, of course, there's also Thanksgiving Banner. What I'm trying to say here is that it's going to be very, very rough. So if you're summoning, and you look at Raiko and you say, I'm willing to risk it for the biscuit, I wish you the best of luck. There's a part of me that will probably join you in that, but we'll see. Thankfully, the first raid update... I also really like Kentucky, but... If we're Kentucky, I can maybe wait and hope that I get it off of a random ticket or something. But anyway, here's the schedule. The first day, of course, both Kentucky and Raiko will be featured, and then the next day it will be uh, Kentucky, Raiko, Kentucky, Raiko, and then ending with both of them again. So there you go. That's the current thing we've got for the pre-release campaign. When there's more stuff released, I will gladly talk about it. But for now, that's the end of the video. Until next time, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.